Girls, what made you go from maybe I would date him to no way I would date him? There was a guy I had a huge crush on while I was in high school. It was two years ahead of me, so I knew that the chances he had even seen me in the halls were slim to none. The one day I got a friend request from him on Facebook. I added him and managed to work up the guts to send him a message. We talked like normal. I was way too nervous to entertain the idea of flirting. The next few days went by fine. He saw me in school a few times and we would wave and smile at each other. I checked his profile out to see if it says he was in a relationship. He was. Cool. No biggie. I was pretty happy that he talked to me at all. He was fun to talk to and we had a good bit in common. So I was more than happy to be a friend if nothing else. And who knows? Maybe one day it would turn out to be something more. Maybe a month went by of pretty vanilla run-of-the-mill chit-chat. What music we liked. What kind of video games we were playing, etc. Then one morning I got the most overly aggressive toxic messages from him. It's been years now, but the gist was that I was ugly, looked like a little boy. You know, what every teenage girl wants to wake up and see. Turns out that his super crazy girlfriend had gone into his account and did not like that we were talking. She accused me of sleeping with him. I absolutely did not. And then got a bunch of her friends to berate my profile with nasty comments about how hideous I was and how this girl was so much prettier than I was. I locked my profile down, blocked all the girls and just sat there wondering how this crazy crap show started out of nowhere. The guy messaged me later that night trying to blow off what happened. I was pretty upset by the whole thing and was even more pissed off that he was so nonchalant about his girlfriend being so hostile. We stopped talking after that. I was pretty bummed since he seemed cool before that went down. He and his girlfriend were on and off for years after that, so as far as I'm concerned, I dodged a huge dysfunctional bullet. So yeah, the crazy girlfriend of a guy I liked went postal when she saw us talking on social media. I stopped talking to the guy since I didn't want to deal with his or her baggage. Story 2. We were at an event and I had a little too much to drink. Note, I'm generally a happy drunk and don't drink that often. After we parted ways, he didn't respond to any of my messages for a couple of days, despite my reaching out and ignored me if we happened to be in the same room, and asked me for a video I had taken at the event. I was a little annoyed that he only contacted me when he wanted something, so I told him so. He told me that he had given me the silent treatment because I had been bossy that we could hang out, but only if I never drank in his presence. Which I really don't care about, like I said, I'm not a big drinker. For the record, this is the first time in my life, I'm 35, that I've been that friend someone doesn't want around when they're drunk. Still like the guy. I think he's fun to be around, but I don't want to date him anymore. Mostly because of his response to a conflict is pull some high school BS and then sprinkle in some controlling nonsense. I'm not convinced he'd be able to communicate and compromise in an adult relationship. I'm too young and beautiful to waste my time on that. Story 3. I was home for Christmas and so was my brother's best friend, who I had a huge crush on all through middle and high school. He was over visiting my family one day. Eventually, just the two of us were watching a movie and he started flirting hardcore with me. Tickle fight in this case. We'd always been good friends, but not the kind to flirt. Especially not like that. Eventually, he leaves to go home, leaving me wondering if maybe this was finally going to turn into something more, after all these years. On his way home, he called me and started rambling about how he knew he could get me to flirt with him and how his plan had worked, or something to that effect. I forget the rest, but it was pretty clear that all that flirting was just a game to him. It crushed me. But I realized that he really was not for me and I deserved someone who would treat me better than that. On a happy note, this incident not only ended my crush but made me feel much better about the guy I had just started dating around that time. I had been a little unsure about him before going home for that Christmas. I ended up marrying that guy and we have been together for over five years now. I still see my brother's best friend a fair bit, but I was able to get past all of this and it's not awkward anymore. Story 4 He was particularly vociferous about his dislike of animals. This wasn't what caused my outright abhorrence of the man, but I thought his disdain for creatures he perceived as inferior was a little disconcerting. I've never encountered someone so passionate about hating animals. Indifference is more common in my experience. This advocate for animal extinction drives me home from the restaurant and he's affable when engaging in conversation. He pulled his vehicle to a stop outside my home, courteously asking if I had a good time and can we arrange another day. Unfortunately, he was audaciously disrupted by the barking of my two rambunctious chihuahuas who were excited to see me. If you could have seen the contorting of his face, the absolute repulsion of his expression when he looked at these two tiny dogs behind my wrought iron gate, you would have recoiled in your seat as I did. He was incandescent with anger. He opened the car door and screamed in a residential area at two dogs with, Shut the hell up! Yeah. Mr. Irascible couldn't comprehend my refusal for a second date. Why his feelings aren't reciprocated, so he sent me a tirade of text messages interspersed with insults. I just replied with a poo emoji and said, Here's some dog crap. Never trust someone who doesn't like animals. Story 5. Nice guy in college showed me around my freshman year of college and gave me great advice about taking classes, professors, and organizations. He was clearly interested in me and asked me for my number a few times until I finally gave it to him. He seemed sweet and I was happy to text. One night he invited me to the dorm lounge to watch a movie with him. I think, cool, 
We'll be in a public place, and it'll be a great casual way to get to know each other. I show up, and he's sitting on the couch, crossfaded out of his mind and reeking of alcohol. I'm a little freaked out about this, but I sit down anyway because, hey, this is college, right? Dude was too messed up to hold a conversation and kept zoning out on the movie. But here's the kicker. He had a freaking cold the entire time and a snot dripping down his face because he was too gone to wipe his nose or sniffle. Stayed 30 minutes, left, and never talked to him again. Freaking nasty and rude. Story 6. He was a coworker and nice to talk to. We had reasonably intelligent discussions about a number of things whenever business was slow. Much more interesting than the BS everyone else was always gossiping about. I wasn't very physically attracted to him, so initially I said no, but after a few repeated attempts, I finally agreed to go out and gave him my number, which he wasted no time in using to tell me I should send him pics and demand that I arrive for our date wearing a dress and no drawers. I have no idea why this is such a thing now. People who are seemingly normal, even enjoyable to interact with, will turn into a completely different person once you're interacting without the face-to-face -face connection. He was immediately blocked and very shortly after I found a new job, so I haven't heard from him since. He turned into Date Mike from The Office. Story 7. Met up with this dude at a bowling alley and he proceeded to act like an obnoxious jerk after downing a few drinks. He had already killed it at this point, but it gets better. The plan was to crash at his place and I kept with it because I figured I could wait out this one horrible meeting and didn't really want to make the hour drive back home that night. When we get there, I find out he lives with his parents. Nothing wrong with that, but what was wrong was that he didn't tell them I was coming over, so he had to sneak me in. This guy's sloppy drunk at this point and proceeds to wear nothing but his underwear once we get to his room. Tidy whities by the way in case any of you were curious. He finds some old pizza left over in a pizza box in his room and lays in bed eating while he's dropping it all over himself. He finally passes out and I'm playing on my phone, debating on whether or not I can leave quietly enough to not wake his parents because I don't want to be mistaken for a home intruder or something, but his room is a disaster and I'm not sleeping on that floor and I'm sure as hell not getting in his bed. While I'm mulling over my options in my head, this dude gets up, sleepwalks to the corner of his room, whips it out and whizzes all over the wall on the floor. He turns around like he's going back to bed, but wait... Nope. He just lays down on the floor in his own mess. I decided it was definitely worth leaving at that point and made it out without waking anyone up. This guy was so pissed I had just bailed and couldn't comprehend why I wanted nothing to do with him anymore even after I told him what he did. Story 8. He was good looking and superficially charming. We got along decently. And he wasn't actively mean or anything, so it took a while for me to realize that he was an awful guy to date. I did notice he wasn't very affectionate. I would buy him drinks and meals and shower him with compliments to make him feel better about his insecurities, but he never complimented me, paid for me, or said or did anything particularly nice. After we'd been dating for a few months, I was having a rough time and opened up to him about my fears and insecurities, and instead of comforting me, he told me that my insecurities were completely ridiculous and illogical and made me feel guilty for feeling bad. When I confronted him about it, he revealed that he doesn't believe in compliments or in comforting people because it encourages people to be insecure and doesn't fix the problem. It ended when he offered to make his breakfast, ate a small plate of it, and cleaned up everything for him, and he charged me $25 in Venmo. That's when I realized he may have actually been a sociopath. Holy crap, that sounds freaking awful. Who the heck charges someone they're dating for cooking them breakfast? And a whole $25? If you agree that no damn home-cooked breakfast should be $25 a plate, then hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Story 9 First, he kept referencing high school and things that happened in high school, or even middle school. We were in our late 20s. He's a nice guy, but how hung up he was in high school and his memories from it were overwhelming. He had no interest in now or the future, just what he had done in the past. Second, I met a guy abroad. He and his friend and me and my friend were the only guests from our country. We clicked, had the super romantic cliche summer fling. Met back home, it turns out he legit held the belief that women are less than men because women are not prepared to apply themselves the way men are. And he had never met a woman as intellectual as him before. Yeah, okay, thanks, but no thanks. It didn't last. Third, after flirting with me for weeks, he saw a picture of my sister and told me she was gorgeous and much prettier than me. He's still kind of flirting with me after that. In all honesty, she is prettier than me, always has been, and I knew he would think it, but I never expected him to say it to my face. Fourth, before a first date, texted me and told me that he told his mom he met someone. Uh, okay. During our first date, spoke nonstop about how smart or awesome or compassionate etc. he is. When I told him I volunteered for an animal rescue, his response was a disgusted look and, oh, you're bringing strays to your home. After seeing that I was visibly pissed by that remark, he proceeded to tell me how he really liked dogs. He used to have a dog when he worked in Africa, took really good care of it, and even take time off to take the dog to the vet. But unfortunately, he had to tie it in the yard when he had to escape in the night, but he made sure to leave it with some water. And about how he would really like to adopt a sick or disabled dog now. It was hard keeping a straight face after that. There was no second date. And yes, I know, I attract losers. Story 10. I met this guy. Thought he was really cute and he knew a lot of my friends, so I thought it would be great. 
I knew he had some health issues and family problems, but it didn't really bother me. We went out to get drinks and we had an awesome time. He tells me a bunch of stories about himself. And when I mean a bunch, I mean the whole conversation was all about him. I didn't think too much of it at the time, but then we hung out again and the stories were about him again. And they aren't all fun stories. After our third time hanging out, it was more like he was throwing himself a pity party every time we talked. My friend started saying the same thing too, like, wow, he's kind of depressing. I also realized that he knows nothing about me, but I can tell you damn near every bad thing that's happened to him. After three times, I'm really over it and don't want to be with someone who's trying to bum me out all the time. Story 11. He was charming, intelligent, and cute. I knew he had a crush on me, so he broached the topic of maybe trying to date. He was all for it, but after that, I noticed him being rude and dismissive of me. Constant interruptions, talking down to me in my own studies that he wasn't well-versed on, loud objectifying comments of not only me but other women. In the end, I cut it short after a few weeks because I got the sense he didn't respect me. This was years ago, and recently one of our mutual friends reached out to me to talk about some of the weirdness of that time. Apparently, he would complain about me constantly behind my back while also voicing insecurities that I was too good for him. I never saw it that way. If he didn't act like that towards me, it could have worked. The fallout from that also destroyed any chance of a friendship between us after he made some cruel and malicious comments to me after I called things off. Story 12 So I lived in my last place for nine months and it was super awesome. My roommate has a friend, M, who was always super sweet to me. I was the only girl in my room was right next to the common area and shared a window with a back porch. M was always asking me how my day was, if the TV was too loud, if the company was being too loud, and he didn't even live there. As someone with anxiety that had just gone away from a cruel family, my face had lumps and bruises, it meant the world to me that he was so considerate. Against my wishes, I eventually had to move and I knew I was going to make a move. So I started flirting with him hardcore and then when we hang out, he turns into this totally different guy when he's alone with a woman. He wants to hold hands and I thought it was sweet. He couldn't carry on a full conversation with me without hinting about how much he wanted to kiss me. Kissing is fine, but at this point I'm just trying to hang out and get to know each other. Then he wants to cuddle in my bed. Sometimes I struggle with saying no when it comes to intimacy due to some past experiences. So I agree and he sticks his hand down there while he thinks I'm asleep. Never spoke to him again. Left me very sad and disappointed. Story 13. When I was in high school, I was in a pretty tight-knit, albeit nerdy group of friends. Not nerdy in the cool way that people always talk about these days. People used to throw stuff at us at our table in the cafeteria in the morning. So yeah, I was, am, a nerd. Anime, medieval fantasy, video games, role-playing, D&D. But I'm also a pretty attractive chick. I was very tomboyish and loved hanging out with the guys. This led to about 75% of the guys in my friend group liking me at some point, and a good chunk of them asked me out. Well, my friend S asked me if I'd go to a dance with him, and I didn't have a date, so I agreed. He was super excited, but I didn't really feel interested in dating. Over the next week, he would walk me to class, and I thought maybe I'd give it a chance. That was until I got my lip pierced. When I came to school that day, he took one look at me and shouted, You look freaking ugly! and stormed off. A week later, he's asking if we should buy our couple's ticket to the dance, and I tell him to get a single's ticket. He did not understand why I was mad at him. This was a long time ago. Everything is forgiven, and we're friends, both married to other people. I see him once a week for game night, but I would never, ever date him. Story 14 This just happened to me, and I'm still genuinely baffled by it. This began on OkCupid okay and then went to texting. An important factor. I play roller derby and mention it in my profile, and half of my picks are derby picks. There is zero chance this dude was not aware of this. So we got along pretty well via texting. I'd mentioned things like going skating or going to derby practice. It's a huge part of my life, so I talked about it semi-frequently. I started to notice that every time I mentioned it, he'd ignore it and or change the subject. It became extremely obvious after a while. Finally, I pointed it out to him. He ignored that also. The conversation continued and I mentioned the fact that he kept ignoring my mentioning of the biggest hobby of my life. He responded by saying, I literally don't know what you want me to say. He never acknowledged Derby and never acknowledged the fact that he'd been ignoring every mention of it. He even seemed to hint at the fact that I was the crazy one, bringing this up. It occurred to me that he was messing with me for whatever crazy reason. Even if he wasn't aware I was doing that, to ignore it after I pointed it out, he was gaslighting me. It made me infuriated. I felt like I'd be constantly doubting myself if I dated him at all. I didn't care if he liked Derby or not, but I care if someone I would date seriously would treat me respectfully and acknowledge my interests. Story 15 Got invited over to a friend's house for a barbecue. There's a guy I want you to meet. I arrive and I get to hear about his job, his dog, motorcycle, recent vacation. He seems annoyed when I try to reciprocate. Really, you are interrupting my train of thought vibe. He complains about dating. He says he doesn't bother with dating sites as they're full of 40-something recent divorcees with three kids. Ha ha. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. He finally runs out of steam and asks me what I'm all about. I just turned 40. Husband left me last year. Three kids. Guys. He was older than me. Wanting someone without baggage is fine at 25. Not so realistic at 45. 
In fact, I would consider not having baggage at 45 to be bigger baggage than normal. I have lived a life baggage. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you made it this far, I'm sure you'll also enjoy what was your I'm out of here first date moment. Story 2 will make anyone run. See you in that video.